Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm doing another Eat What You Grow video, and today I wanted to focus on sweet potatoes. But here in Florida, most places in the country, you're not gonna have um, sweet potatoes yet, but what you do have are sweet potato greens, and they are completely edible, they taste really good. There's nothing um, of the sweet potato plant that you can't use. And a lot of times, I'm sure we all forget that. Um, but this is another really great, nutritious green that you can put in your garden. You can eat it raw. You can cook it. You can put it in eggs. You can put it in soups. You can put it in stews. You can put it in anything you want. And it's just a really great additive. And instead of wasting um, all these delicious greens, because we can't get the sweet potatoes till way later in the fall, even the winter, um, we can use the greens. So I'm going to show you just a simple way to use them today and like I said you can do them as many ways as you can think of really. <laughs> so here in my regular vegetable garden, what you would consider a normal vegetable garden, I have um, lots of flowers growing but I have fruits, vegetables, um, and this is pretty you know standard. Um, I have sweet potatoes growing in this raised container. Um, it's about 18 inches deep um, and I planted I think two sweet potato slips in this. So my sweet potato yield, I have no idea what that's going to be um, because these were slips from a sweet potato that I grew uh, last year, but I have an abundance of leaves. So a lot of times I will give these leaves to the bunny when they pop up in my garden. So like this, I have sweet potato slips popping up everywhere in my garden because once you grow sweet potatoes somewhere, most likely you will always grow sweet potatoes there um, because they grow underground in these little tuber type situations here. And um, they just keep popping up unless you completely remove them from your soil. So last year I utilized this bed. It took such a long time and I harvested too early because I just needed the bed space that I didn't get very many sweet potatoes themselves. I had so many uh, leaves, but not many sweet potatoes. So this year I put them in this traditionally growing in a raised bed that I'm not gonna grow anything else in and I'm just going to um, leave this alone until they are completely ready and I can harvest as many tubers as this makes. But in the meantime, I have all of these leaves. Let me set these down. Watch out, Benelli. And all these weeds. I was just out here weeding. All these leaves that I can use in the kitchen. <clears throat> so once again, I'm out here early in the morning. And it really um, is simple. You just pluck all these leaves off, however many you'd like. Um, just like spinach, just remember they cook down, or like any green really. So you're gonna wanna pick more than you think you need for a meal. And then once you cook them down, it'll be reduced significantly. Um, but yeah, so you just pluck the leaves off. Oh, well look at that. So we're gonna leave this guy. Those are green lacewing eggs. So those are beneficial insects and they eat aphids and spider mites and all sorts of things. So we're gonna tuck that guy back up under here. So always check your leaves because you don't want any little bugs coming in. I'll throw away the bad ones, but the beneficial ones I'm going to definitely leave out in my garden. So I'm gonna pluck a bunch of these and then I will show you how I have sweet potatoes growing in other parts of my garden too. Okay, so just this actually, by the way, is a watermelon that started growing up from over there, so I just left it. Look, there's a, a baby watermelon coming. So I just got done harvesting this big bowl, 
which honestly is going to reduce down so much that this isn't going to be enough. Oh, look. Ew. What kind of... I wonder if that's a baby hornworm. Oh my goodness. Disgusting. I could have eaten this. I am definitely going to look this up real quick and let you know what that is. But definitely wash your vegetables. <laughs> Yes, I just looked this up and it is some kind of baby hornworm. I don't want hornworms. I will just kill this and get rid of it. Um, so that is very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a baby hornworm. You only find them when they're giant and eat your entire plant. Now this, I wouldn't mind really if it was on this because... Um, or maybe I won't kill it. Maybe, I mean, maybe it can live. I don't know. I'll decide. I try not to kill things because it's, you know, the circle of life. Unless they're detrimental to what I'm eating as a crop. But there's so many sweet potato leaves. If they want to use this as their plant that they choose to eat, I'd rather that over other things. So, I don't know. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to leave it in here. Uh, although I do have a watermelon in there. Uh, I don't know. We'll decide. <laughs> Anyways, what I was going to say, let me just set this up here, is um, I'm going to give these to Piper. Um, so I cut off, or I trimmed off a bunch of the leaves off of these lower hanging um, branching branches from the sweet potato. And you'll notice that they all have roots starting to form. If you let these root into the ground, that's what happens when, um, what, what I was saying was that you'll never have... A shortage of sweet potato coming up again um, so I'm gonna actually cut the vines off and let them just reflush out um, I wouldn't mind sweet potato vines everywhere but you see this is what they do they'll send this into the ground they say and I'm not an expert in sweet potatoes but so sweet potatoes grow from slips so when you plant a sweet potato in or put it in some water or soil it'll shoot up what is called a sweet potato slip and then you take pluck that off that will grow roots and that's what you plant in the soil and from that slip tubers will grow it'll put off all of these different vines but they say they don't grow from the roots that go into the ground like potatoes do um so <clears throat> um that's why i'm comfortable eating all the greens although I do find sweet potatoes growing in my other patch that I've no I know I'd never planted a slip there. So I think given the right amount of time, they will grow tubers um, that you can eat. <clears throat> but I don't know if that's all varieties. Like I said, I'm not an expert on it. But this is just what I do. So but sometimes I find surprise sweet potatoes. And that's always a good thing. So I don't care what the science is. I'll just keep doing what I do. And then if I find sweet potatoes that I didn't plant, then so be it. So I'm going to cut all of these off um, and just move to the other section. So the other place I have sweet potatoes growing abundantly is over here in my compost area. Um, I can't remember. I don't think I planted sweet potatoes here. Um, I'm almost certain I never did. And this is three years, almost three years now. Um, so I have sweet potato greens growing in the finished compost. And then these are covering my leaf bin. And... I have them growing all over as a ground cover under here. This is my daughter's window and then they're growing up and they look so sweet just like that and I really love it. So just like all the other sweet potatoes, I can come in here and I can harvest these and these are completely edible. Um, they are a different type of sweet potato. You'll notice they're a little more purple. Just scroll. Um, they, I believe, are a purple sweet potato. Um, <clears throat> but I don't remember. Actually, I can show you. I found one yesterday. 
So this is my leaf bin. They kind of camouflage this, so I don't leave. I don't take any of these at all, and a lot of the leaves tend to get pretty old. Um, so I just let them run where they want. But I was collecting leaves yesterday, and I wanted to show you. Where is it? Here's a sweet potato growing. I didn't plant that. It wasn't a slip. And there's another one under here. Look at that. So, sweet potatoes don't just grow from slips. I know that because I see it. I just can't tell you the varieties that do that, how long they actually take. That's probably been down there a long time. But that is creating roots, and that's where all of these have come from. So, I mean, you really... there's Sweet potatoes are so easy. They're almost like weeds. But they make a great ground cover for your gardens. If you'll notice here... They are covering the ground in here, and that's fine. I just planted this hibiscus yesterday. This is not a native hibiscus, but my daughter loves hibiscus, and I thought, what a great way to screen this window because I had a camellia die here, and this is right outside her window, and that way it covers my mess over there. So she's got bumblebees all the way all out here, a bird. Uh, bath and then the hibiscus now and then the sweet potato vines act as moisture retention um, as a ground cover and so weeds don't take over so um, sweet potato vines are an excellent way to um, or what was I saying sweet potato vines are a great crop to utilize in more than one way because they're multi-purpose you can eat them, they make a great ground cover, and then you get the tubers at the end of the season. And plus, I mean, just look at that. It's so pretty. So definitely um, consider growing them in different applications. There's really no r right or wrong way you can grow sweet potatoes. Um, so yeah, so now we're going to go inside and I will show you how I prepare them. Real quick, I thought this was pretty funny. So I had a, a store-bought sweet potato um, that had gone past the point of me eating it. So it was out here on the back porch, and then my daughter was playing with it, and then it ended up like just, see this one's gross. It ended up just like falling into the side of the sidewalk, and it got covered up. Well, a few like a week or so later I noticed sweet potato slips growing out of it so I plucked them off and I planted one there let's see one there and then two over here because these will act as a ground cover as well so I just plucked them off they already had tiny roots in them so these will also turn into long vines and cover this whole area. Look, something completely ate this squash plant. It's not even worth keeping. Um, and then hopefully I get some tubers in this area um, at the end of the season. If not, it's fine because those were completely free potato slips. And this is my trial garden in raw Florida sand, basically. So, so far things are doing all right. Little bonus squash. Anyways, okay, back to the sweet potatoes. So with anything you bring in from the garden, you're going to want to wash it really well, especially greens. Um, there's lots of things that nibble on greens and things that you won't want in your food. So um, what I always do, and I think I'm out of vinegar. Ooh, okay. Well, I usually um, put a splash of vinegar in a big pot or bowl of water with the greens and I let them soak for at least like 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on if I get uh, uh, busy. 
but that just makes sure like anything in them is you know drowned or comes off and then I'll I'll separate them and rinse them a second time before I cook them that just ensures you're not eating those uh, hornworms that I found before so we will be back Hey guys, I'm back in my kitchen and I am going to saute this, um, these sweet potato greens. So basically, I have washed and rinsed several times all of these greens. Now you can cut off these stems, um, but I'm not going to because they're just going to cook down um, and I think they make for some nice texture. And like I said, they're totally edible. But if that's not something um, you would like to do, um, you can definitely cut those off. Aubrey wants to say hi. Hi! I'm Aubrey, and Mom's making... Sweet potatoes. For, Mom's making stew for dinner, and it's going to be delicious. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, so back to this. Um, so these are all washed. There's really no need to cut them if you don't want to. Like I said, if you're putting these in something like a casserole or eggs or something like that, you might want to um, wash or cut them up smaller. But I'm literally just going to saute them and use them as a side dish for my chicken stew for later. Um, you can come up here and you could literally put them in the chicken stew as well and they would cook down and be like a spinach or something. Can but I Sure. But you definitely um, don't have to cut them up for this application. Oh, so I just so have good. butter and garlic in here. And then I'm going to just dump the greens in and I'll let them cook down for a few minutes. I'm going to put salt and pepper on them. And then maybe a splash of lemon. Um, if I, I might cut a lemon open for that. Um, and then sometimes I'll, don't eat that, <laughs> sometimes I will um, put eat some chicken broth or beef broth, whatever kind I have on hand, um, just to make it kind of like a sauce. But either way, it's super easy, so we're just going to put the greens in now before the garlic gets too dark. Wait, how are you making a YouTube video? Ah, oh, it smells so good! The stew smells so good. Like, I can't even help it. It smells so good. <laughs> So at this point, they are have only been in there like maybe three or four minutes, and they yeah. are completely wilted down. The stems aren't as soft as um, I would like. You want to stir? But so they'll just continue to cook for a little bit longer. This is in a cast iron um, Dutch oven, so the heat they'll, it'll keep the heat pretty hot. Um, so I'll leave this in here to simmer, and it looks like there's enough liquid in it with just the liquid Can I coming out of bit more butter in it? no no more butter um coming out of the greens so next aubrey is going to squeeze a little bit of lemon in Here, let me mm -hmm. get the seed out of the way you want to squeeze the lemon just a little bit and remember i'm aubrey okay remember squeeze the lemon that's probably good we just a need a little. More. That's probably yeah. good. And then my husband makes like just a homemade blend of salt, pepper, garlic, salt, 
or garlic powder. So usually I'll just grab that and then we'll do just a tiny bit of that. You don't want to season, over season your greens because if they get too salty, you can't change that. So we're going to let that cook a little bit longer and then we'll see how the stems um, feel in a few minutes. That's what you So these are finally done. They were only been cooking uh, for maybe 10 minutes. Look how 15, big this is. Oh my gosh. 15 so... minutes at the most. Um, so I'm going to take them out and just put them in a bowl because they are going to end up being for dinner, not for right now. Um, and then I will show you what they look like. I'm only taking them out now because I need this container for dinner or this pot for dinner. So of course I'm going to put all of that good juice in this container. Hold on. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're just taste testing it and of course I, I left the stems on it. But those kind of double like a green bean or something. So they're actually really tasty. Yeah, it's really tasty actually. Mm -hmm. And with the um, butter and garlic. Garlic, yeah. Yeah. It's so, really good with that. <laughs> right, Mom? It is very good, yes. So it's as simple as that. It's another way that you can utilize everything that you grow. So if you are growing sweet potatoes and you've never eaten the, uh oh, you dropped it. The dog will eat it. <laughs> and you've never eaten the greens, I highly suggest you add them into your diet because they are high in vitamin A, vitamin C. I've even done some research and they say they help stop cancer um, cells from growing. So those are some pretty interesting claims. So I uh, encourage you to do more research on it and eat what you grow. Say bye. <laughs>